country's deepening humanitarian crisis. President Joe Biden will deliver a speech soon at the State Department announcing a number of changes to foreign policy and a shift from former President Trump's America First approach. We were hearing from him just a few minutes ago as well. Earlier, his national security advisor hinted at what to expect. He is going to announce an end to American support for offensive operations in Yemen. That is a promise that he made in the campaign that he will be following through on. But he will go further than that. He will talk about the United States playing a more active and engaged role in the diplomacy to bring an end to the conflict in Yemen. And that will include the naming of a special envoy, which will happen today. We have spoken with both uh, uh, senior officials in the UAE and senior officials in Saudi Arabia. We have consulted with them. We are pursuing a policy of no surprises when it comes to these types of actions, so they understand that this is happening. Let's now speak to our White House correspondent, Kimberly Halkett. Uh, and this is all part of a broader foreign policy speech we're expecting to hear from President Biden. And we uh, were hearing a few remarks from him uh, just a couple of minutes ago about the, the broad shift in the way the U.S. will approach diplomacy. What specifically are we expecting on U.S. participation in Yemen? Well, you're right. Uh, the U.S. president spoke just a moment ago to the diplomatic corps where he gave them a pep talk in essence. He's now on the uh, top floor of the State Department that where the Secretary of State's office is meeting with Tony Blinken along with his vice president Kamala Harris who also spoke just a few moments ago. You're right. There's an incredible shift that's taking place and that's why they spoke to the diplomatic corps signaling we appreciate your efforts in the last four years which many recognize were trying, uh, but now we are going to have a significant shift in focus, uh, not only in foreign policy all around the world, but in Yemen, as you point out. And that is what we're watching for, because following that meeting, the U.S. president will be having a foreign policy speech where he will outline specifically what he plans to do. Uh, we've known for some time, and somewhat controversially, and in contrast to the support of the U.S. Congress, or rather the lack of support, uh, the United States has continued to fund in terms of intelligence support as well as weapons sales to the Saudis for that Saudi-led conflict in Yemen that, of course, the the United Nations is called a humanitarian crisis. That is about to end. That is the big headline. We are going to be hearing from the U.S. president as he speaks at the State Department. We also understand he's going to name, as we heard Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor, talking just moments ago, we expect that he will be naming an envoy to deal with the region by the name of Timothy Lenderking, who is uh, familiar in the diplomatic corps. He's well-versed in Gulf and Yemen affairs. And in terms of single signaling a different approach, what this uh, envoy is going to be tasked with doing is essentially encouraging the warring parties uh, in this conflict to reach some sort of a, a peace deal, a ceasefire, uh, and also in terms of the weapons sales. We know that those have been temporarily frozen, uh, but there is another step that needs to be taken, and that is with a terrorist de designation that was made by the Trump administration in the 11th hour of Donald Trump's presidency. This has affected humanitarian aid into Yemen. Uh, what we expect is there could be some potential announcement on whether that will be rescinded. We know it is being reviewed. So this is what we're watching for very carefully. But very, very quickly, uh, we have gotten some excerpts from the speech that the president will be making. And it's key that what he's saying there is it's time for the United States to reclaim credibility and moral authority to begin with restoring American engagement internationally to earn back the leadership position that he believes the United States has an obligation to uphold. Thanks very much from Washington, D.C., Kimberly Halkett. Thanks very much. Our diplomatic editor, James Bays, is live for us at United Nations. He's looking at the story as well. And, uh, James, previously, the United Nations has said that the, uh, Yemen is suffering from the world's worst humanitarian crisis. What could a more uh, active, engaged role from Washington mean for negotiating efforts? Well, diplomats here have been watching this issue very closely, and in some ways it's not a big surprise, because if you look at the comments of candidate Joe Biden, he said he was going to stop U.S. support, uh, military support, intelligence support for the war in Yemen. His comments on that, though, is, in his own words, he hasn't really made any since he made a big speech in New York in 2019, and many diplomats were wondering whether there would be Saudi diplomatic pressure and he'd have to walk that back and wouldn't actually proceed with that 
policy, but it now looks clear that he is going to proceed with that policy of dropping U.S. support. Remember, the U.S. support didn't start under Trump. It started under uh, the Obama administration where he was the vice president. So what does this mean for the, US, for the U.N.'s peace efforts led by Martin Griffiths? He, at times, has said he's feeling close uh, to the Houthis uh, and the Yemeni government getting together for proper talks, and at other times he's felt those hopes have been seriously dashed. I asked the spokesperson for the Secretary-General whether this U.S. move could give more space for diplomacy. Any move that reduces uh, the number of weapons, the military activity, and gives, uh, is to be welcomed uh, and will give more space, as you say, and more hope, uh, most not only to the talks, but more importantly, more hope to the people of Yemen.